on one of our late night social media power scrolling sessions, we saw a photo that one of our friends posted of the Red Reef Trail. It looked really pretty, and V and I were kind of intrigued by one of its main unique features, which is a kind of sketchy climb up some slick rock into a canyon. Please note that this trail is popular. It's reported that tens of thousands of people hike it each year. So we suggest getting an early start if you want to find a parking spot. The other thing that you need to know is that you do need to pay to do this hike. If you're just stopping in for the day, it's only $5 and you can also use the America the Beautiful Pass. After we passed the toll booth, we headed to the back left corner of the park because that is where the trailhead is located. For as popular of a hike as it is, there is not a ton of parking here. There is an overflow lot, but it will add a mile to your hike. This video was shot in the beginning of March, and even though it may not look like it, it was really cold when we first started this hike. Maybe that's why we were the only ones on the trail when we first started. This trail has quite a few options. If you just hike to the bottom of the slick rock section and back, it's only 6 tenths of a mile each way. If that's all you plan on doing, the trail will be considered easy. If you decide to climb the slick rock, the trail will level up to a strenuous rating. And there's even a loop option to this trail that will increase the distance all the way up to 5.7 miles. We would like to get back out there and try the loop option, but when we were shooting this video, we had just finished a couple of hard hiking days in Zion and we still had to drive home, so we opted for the shorter route. If you're traveling with your four-legged friends, there is good news because pets are allowed on this trail. They do need to be on a leash, and if you do decide to bring a pet, please be sure to clean up after them. For the most part, this trail is really easy to follow. There are trail markers along the way, and there are only a couple of spots where the trail splits off in more than one direction. We are actually coming up on one of those forks right now. After passing this thin ice that we'll get back to in a second, the trail came to a fork. We decided that we would check out what was on the right side first. This put us on a short trail, which was probably only about 30 or 40 yards long. And before we knew it, it came to a dead end in this really pretty cove. It was quite obvious that this was not the correct trail, so we headed back and took the fork to the left. As we climbed up one of the sandy hills that gives this trail its 90 feet of elevation change, V noticed that one of the trail markers had fallen down, so she fixed it. Not all heroes wear capes. The hill is short and not too steep, and once you're at the top of it, you are almost to your destination. If you're doing this hike in the summer, please be sure to bring more water than you think you need. Until you get into the canyon, there is very little shade on this trail, and I can imagine that it gets pretty hot here in the summer. As we crested the big hill, the trail started to dip back down, and a blind arch started to peek up over the horizon. It is another quick and cool detour to take if you want to visit the blind arch. If you've never heard the term blind arch before, that's when an arch is still connected to a rock face. This makes it into a bit more of a cave until it breaks through on the other side. While we were checking out the blind arch, we also found more sheets of thin ice, and you know that we can't help but play with that. Oh. I guess that you could consider us a tiny bit easily amused. After all of our icy antics, we found ourselves at the mouth of the canyon, and this is where we started to encounter quite a bit of water. There was plenty of room to go around it when we went, but conditions can change, and I would recommend bringing shoes that you don't mind getting wet. If you hike just a little bit further into the canyon, you're going to get to the spot where most people turn around, and you should too if you want to keep this hike as an easy hike. Continuing on from this point will require you to climb that slick rock section at the end of the canyon. At the time that we went, there was a rope there that made things a ton easier, but I've heard before that that rope is not guaranteed to be there. And if it's not, the climb could get a little bit dicey. I would definitely not want to fall from the top. If you do decide to do the climb, you will be unlocking a whole nother section of this hike. The scenery is really cool and the reflections off of the pools make for great photos. During certain times of the year, you might even find a small waterfall next to the handholds that you use to climb up. We couldn't find a ton of information about what happens on the trail after you make the climb, so we decided to explore a little bit. We came to another fork in the canyon and we went off to the right first. This went in a little ways, but eventually we came to a spot where we could no longer bypass the pools. If the conditions are dry enough to allow you to continue on this way, you can actually do a hike called the Red Cliffs Scramble. 
That hike is 3.1 miles long and it's rated hard. But as far as we were concerned, the trail was impassable, so we headed back to check out the other side of the fork. I don't think that this portion of the trail is anywhere near as popular as the main Red Reef Trail. It doesn't appear to be maintained and it was definitely overgrown. But if you can make your way past all this scratchy branches, there is a lot of beauty here. As we ventured further into this smaller canyon, we saw some really unique rock formations including this one that looked like half of the subway. This is where you will be hiking if you decide to do the bigger loop, but as for us, after some exploring we decided that it was time to head back. Since we are doing the out and back version of this trail, the way back is fairly self-explanatory. The main challenge that most people will face is climbing down the slick rock. It can be a little bit intimidating and the challenge will be amplified if that rope is gone. Even though there are plenty of footholds chiseled into the rock, there aren't a ton of quality options to grab onto with your hands. So if you decide to visit, please be sure to know your limitations and don't push it. While the trail is pretty up on top of the climb, it is not epic enough to risk hurting yourself. After you make it through the down climb, it is pretty much smooth sailing all the way back to the car. You'll have one short hill to climb up and then you can pretty much put it on cruise control the rest of the way back. One of the other nice things about the way back is the view down the canyon. It is beautiful. And not only is it nice to look at, but it will help keep you from getting lost as well. You do still of course have all of the trail markers, but as long as you stay in the canyon, it should take you directly back to the parking lot. It's easy to see why this trail is so popular. Not only is it scenic, but it's also accessible to many skill levels of hikers. Hopefully we can get back out there soon and do the full loop because I would like to see what else it has to offer. And that is going to do it for this video about the Red Reef Trail. What is your favorite hike in Utah? Feel free to let us know in the comments below. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official. And for all the information about this hike as well as other awesome hikes to do in Utah, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.